Hello, this is Dee McDonald from Tech Skills. In this video, I'm going to describe and demonstrate how to remove and install a 3.5 inch floppy drive. Let's begin. This computer has room for two floppy devices. In this case, I have one already installed. I'm going to be removing this device and then show you how to reinstall it. To begin, I've removed the side panel from the computer case. Here's the floppy device that we're going to be removing. To remove the floppy drive, I first need to disconnect the power lead and the ribbon cable. To disconnect the bird power connector, I grip the cable close to the connector and pull straight out from the device. I repeat the same process to remove the data cable. Grip as close to the connector as you can, pull straight out from the device, and you remove it. With the data cable disconnected, I can disconnect the ribbon cable from the motherboard. To do this, I grip the cable as close to the connector as possible, and then I pull straight out from the motherboard. With the power and data cables disconnected from the floppy drive, I can remove the screw that holds it in place. Set that aside. Some cases allow you to remove the floppy drive through the front of the case. Some of them also allow you to pull it inside the case. If possible, I like to push it out the front of the case because otherwise you have to deal with all the components in here and you might hit the RAM or the CPU. So I generally just pull it out the front of the case if possible and remove it from the computer case. Here's the floppy drive that I just removed. On the front of the floppy drive we have the eject button. We have the slot for inserting the floppy disk. And then we have the indicator light. Here's a close-up of the power connector on the back of the floppy drive. The connector does have this plastic shroud. So when you connect the bird connector, it also has a little plastic shroud around it. So this can only be inserted one way. That prevents you from installing it upside down, which could damage the device. So you just line up the plastic shrouds and push the connector in place. Here's the data connection on the floppy device. On the device itself it indicates a number 1 and a 34 to show you the orientation of the data cable. There's also the keyed notch down here to make sure that we install the cable properly. So we just line up the keyed notch and the red stripe of pin number 1 with the data connection and push the connector into place. Some floppy devices, including this one, will allow you to install the data cable upside down. So you see pin number one over here. I'm going to insert it into pin 34. So this physically can install upside down, even with the keyed notch. This won't damage the device and it won't damage the computer, but if you try to use the device like this, the indicator on the floppy device will be on all the time. So that's a dead giveaway that one end of the floppy connector is installed backwards. Floppy cables have 34 wires and a 34 pin connection. The connectors generally have notched keys in them to make sure that you insert them properly. Floppy cables also have a twist. The floppy drive connected after the twist on the cable is designated as the A drive. This floppy cable only supports one device. I have one connection for the motherboard, a second connection for the A drive. If I had a second connector on here, I could connect another floppy. This would be designated as the B drive. One side of the floppy ribbon cables will have a red line. In this case, I have a red dotted line. This indicates that this connection will be pin 1, and the other side will be pin 34. There's a motherboard that I removed from the case so you can get a good look at the floppy connectors. Floppy connectors right here. It's right next to one of the IDE connectors. Although they look very similar, they are different. IDE has 40 pins, whereas the floppy drive connector only has 34. These motherboards will label the connectors so you can easily see which connector is for which device. This motherboard labels the floppy drive as FDD34P. That stands for floppy drive 34 pin. Not all motherboards will indicate it like this. Some of them will say FDD, some of them will say floppy or floppy one or something like that. This white triangle indicates pin number one. It also has the keyed notch. So when we install our floppy drive cable, we line up the red stripe with pin number one. That also lines up with the keyed notch. And then we press it firmly into place. To reinstall the floppy drive, I slide the drive into the case. I line it up with the front bezel to make sure that it's flush. 
And then I add a screw to hold it in place. Next I can install the floppy data cable. On this motherboard it indicates FDD right next to the floppy controller. It also has the keyed notch. So I can take my data cable and insert the end without the twist. Line up the keyed notch with the controller and press it firmly into place. I can connect the Berg power connector. Make sure it's lined up correctly and push it into place. Lastly, I can install the ribbon cable. Make sure I line up pin number one with pin number one on the device. Line up the keyed notch and press the connector firmly into place. With the floppy drive installed, I connect my monitor, keyboard, mouse, and power connector. I insert a Windows 98 bootable disk. This computer is set up to automatically boot to the floppy drive first, the CD-ROM second, and then the hard drive. So the CMOS boot order is set up properly. I can turn on the computer. As the computer boots, I can look on the BIOS splash screen or the CMOS screen, verify that it finds the device. In this case, it shows that it found a disk drive A, 1.44 megabyte, 3.5 inch drive. And now it's booting and it's going to boot into Windows 98. So it starts up the Windows 98. So now I've verified that I've installed it properly. I'm able to boot to a floppy device. Drive indicator light on the floppy device is not on. It's only on when I press enter or it's doing some work. So you can see the light come on here when it's spinning the device but it's not staying on all the time. In this video I described and demonstrated how to remove and install a floppy drive. I hope this was helpful to show you some of the things that you need to know to be able to complete this task on your own. Good luck practicing and thanks for watching.